Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the We Play Invitational. My name is Nature. I am joined by Metis. This is Ultravirus versus KMT. Hey Nature, hey viewers, how is it going? It's been a while actually since we've casted here on KSTV with most of us being busy in DreamHack. And speaking of which, KMT got through to the very last matchup against SK Gaming before being beat narrowly 2-1. to one. But as you said Nature, we're in here and it's going to be the picks and bans. Yeah, so keep in mind if you're watching this, we are watching from stream, unfortunately, as there was not a, uh, enough spectator slots for all the spectators, so we might just be a little bit behind. Bands coming in here fairly quickly, Cassidy, Lucian, Evelyn, Nidalee, Annie, and the Nasses. Um, quite standard bands for now. Yeah, definitely the case. My only concern now, however, is that shivana has been left open and Zazas was playing Shivana a lot at DreamHack. He views her as being one of the top, top laners right now in the game. So with that being open, potentially going to go for that. Or the Olaf. Olaf jungle is something we've seen a great deal of as well. Yeah, um, they have picked that up quite a lot in um, the Korean scene, I believe, and it is slowly starting to come over here to the Western regions as well, as right now we do have NBS hovering over the Shivana, and uh, Alan Erics uh, uh, is still uh, looking to pick up a champion. He might just have picked himself up one already, but once again, we are in a little bit of a delay here. Um, of course, the Shivana also quite a popular pick nowadays as it is really one of these really aggressive uh, junglers, I wanted to say. But as Alan here is right now hovering over that Vi, I would say it is going to be a top lane Shivana. Yeah, and this is something we saw a lot of DreamHack, as I say, for Zazus. It's just very strong, it's very difficult to deal with, and a lot of the teams were putting the opposition who had Shimana top into those one versus two lanes. Vi would make a lot of sense, but looking like they're going to switch over at the very last second there to a Civit a bot lane. So the AD carry of uh, Selva right now is not going to be able to get his hands on the Sivir. Instead, it's going to be Deadly Brother, who's played Sivir a lot recently. It's his go-to AD carry, so you can understand why they'd lock that one in instantly. Yeah, of course, uh, looking to be a quite an aggressive bottom lane as well, as I believe they did recently buff uh, the Sivir a little bit, just a little bit on the, uh, uh, on the Boomerang Blade, if you will as it will now do a little bit more damage as Overpower and Vander will now look to uh, pick uh, their very own champions for the team. Vander hovering over the Sona and Overpower still looking for one. He's got 10 seconds on my stream, so that might uh, happen quite quickly here. Um, not too sure what that is going to be, but there is a whole lot of choice for him. And that is going to be the Vayne, which is of course a very strong AD carry as well. Yep, it's an AD carry that Selva is very comfortable on. I have to apologize, it seems like I'm about 10 seconds behind you here, Nature, so uh, I could be quite a, a distance behind the viewers right now. But Sona Vein bot lane, which we'd expect to be going down here. Of course, we've seen a few veins at top, but I'm really expecting to see Selva running that at the bot. Back over to Ultra Virez, who, of course, are also known as X Gaming Gear EU, who are the team that went to World Finals. So these guys have got a lot of experience under their belt. They've played the very top team teams in the world and they pretty much held themselves in high regard so definitely one to watch out for here although h2k kmt as they're also known right now pulled off such an exceptional run of performances just last week so this is a really interesting game for me lucas nature i can't really see how it's going to go to be honest and it's a best of five so it's a very very long series of games yeah i believe the uh, x gaming gear crew here have uh, swapped out one of their players for Coralius who is uh, now their support, who is at the moment hovering over that Fiddlesticks as he will lock that one in. So we will have a um, quite a lot of fears coming out in that bottom lane, probably, and that might just uh, counter the Vayne just a little bit, as, of course, the Vayne needs to get quite close compared to other AD carries to do as much damage as she would want to, and uh, the uh, Fiddlesticks can keep her away. Quite some fast picks coming in here. Selver hovering, uh, hovering over, picking the Ziggs, and Zaz's picking the Elys. Yep, so off these picks, I'm going to have to assume 
that Elise could be top lane. Olaf could also be top, but we've seen Jankos in particular running a lot of Olaf jungle recently, and it's also in Korea, as you mentioned before, Nature. So I'm assuming Elise is going to be at top. That's going to leave Ziggs in mid, who's one of those top tier AP carries in mid right now in the game. And that's going to leave the last and final pick of this picks and bans phase to Miramax, who's going to be going for the Orianna, potentially, as it was not banned out. Very, very good combination they've got right now. That ball delivery system that we talk about oh so often in League of Legends in the form of Vi. Fiddlesticks could also be the recipient of that shockwave on top of his head once he crow storms in, or Shivana with Dragon's Descent. So there's so many threats right now coming in from Ultra Viras. I'm really looking forward to this game because these are two such strong lineups with a, a lot of, uh, well, champions that we see fairly often. And, of course, the very last pick being the Orianna, which is quite um, a good pick uh, overall when it comes to offense and defense uh, both of them as you can uh, well get out of there with the Ariana fairly quickly using the command dissonance and of course you are so so powerful in team fights if you manage to land the shockwave perfectly uh, which we do not see that often but when it happens it really is a game changer Oh, definitely. Absolutely. If you can land three, four, five player shockwaves, it can turn the tides of a battle that was looking pretty precarious just a few moments previously. A lot of people in chat, it's interesting to see, are saying that Ultra Virais are going to win this easily 3-0. and zero. I'm not too sure, guys. KMT, HTK have been playing so well recently. They've got a lot of Champions are very comfortable on a lot of top tier champions here as well. So I can see this game being super, super close, especially in a best of five format. But that being said, Lucas, we're going to cut to a very quick commercial break. When you rejoin us, we'll be live for game number one between KMT and Ultra Viras. And you're off.
Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to Chaos TV's live coverage of the We Play Invitational Tournament. We are now into the round of eight matchup between KMT and Ultra Virez. I met this joined by Nature, and we've already jumped onto the rift here. How are you feeling, dude? I'm uh, feeling quite good. I'm just a little bit sore on my throat coming back from DreamHack, uh, but I could imagine you are worse in that regard, <laughs> as uh, you had casted just a whole lot of games there. Yes. The, the good news is, though, that I casted a lot of uh, H2K or KMT, as they're being called in this tournament. Speaking of which, Vanda is chasing down Coralius, who's going to eat a bomb on his backside and be poked down pretty low. But, yeah, my voice is still recovering. It's only a, a day or two since I got back from DreamHack. But it's, it's good to be back in the saddle again and be casting for Chaos TV. Yeah, so it is. All right, so we do have Mazarin right now trying to defend the uh, jungle from the enemy uh H2K. I'm I'm going to call them H2K now because of their tags, even though I should call them KMT, right? It's it's quite confusing, isn't yeah. it? Apparently, in the bracket, they're called KMT. They were called KMT at DreamHack, but when you can see all their players tagged up as H2K, the caster in me wants to call them H2K. That's just yeah. how it works for me. <laughs> all right, so Alanir and Mazarin now heading over to their blue buff, as that will be spawning shortly, and they will probably be picking that one up. No real... Uh, Funny things coming out there. Ooh, a lot of a lot of poke coming out of Miramax, as we do not know who that is yet. It might just be a Smurf, but we're not too sure. Yeah, I have asked in the uh, the Skype conversation that we have going if that's Deadly Brothers Smurf or if it is actually just Miramax, because he picked up Sivir, which is one of Deadly Brothers mains right now in this current patch. But we are waiting back for confirmation one way or another. However, that being said, speaking of Sivir, looks like we're going to have the standard lane up here. We're not going to have any one versus twos. Yeah, they will just be. Facing off against Celever and Vander here. Vander getting a little bit of poke in there as well. Coralius has started off with uh, no uh, gold income items for now. So that is quite uh, interesting to see as neither has Miramax. So I would have imagined someone picking up like uh, some kind of gold income items. And we do have Vander picking uh, being... Wow, having picked one up. Sorry about that. As uh, he will be one of the only members of his of all the uh, people on the rift who will be using that gold income item. I think it's probably a case that Coralius wants the ward coverage control and Toss gets a few potions as well. Remember he was harassed down very bad at level 1 so you have to chug through his health potion so that's allowing him to be a bit more spammy in lane especially against a hyper aggressive support like Sona who can spam you from range and we're seeing that right now. Vanda's going in the Terrify has came down there though from Coralius and forces Vanda away so it's just a difference in matchups I think a difference in mentality going forwards from support that Coralius wants to be sustained whereas Vanda's happy to take that gold. Yeah, and they are pushing quite hard in that bottom lane for now, as we do have Alanir heading towards that top lane. Xaxxus might be in Zazas might be in trouble here. He has got that ward in there, so Alanir will be spotted out, and he will be forced to back away, and Zazas uh, would have just wasted his time there. Yeah, it definitely would have been a case of Alunia not getting anything off the back of it, so he is going to back away down onto his double golem. Some Ping is coming down right now from the blue squad of HTK or KMC as Jankos is going to pop down a ward and head on up to top as well. So, nope, I say that, he's actually cancelled his plans, he's just lurking around Wraith for a few seconds longer. Oh, and Elanir once again heading, heading towards that top lane, Zazas is going to be in trouble now. He goes into MBS Null, does, does manage to land the stun, but here is Jankos to cover him up as he goes down on, he goes for MBS, MBS. We'll just be backing away, both members of both teams here trying to back away. Cleaver comes out, but they will be safe for now. Just a quick shout there to Bass, our producer. Apparently the, uh, the team names are on the wrong side. So, sorry for confusion, ladies and gents. AMT is the blue side and Ultra Virez UV is the purple. I'm sure we'll get that sorted pretty soon. Regardless though, back into the action. As you say, we did have a bit of a, a kerfuffle at top lane, but Nobody falling, so that first blood is still on the cards. Looks like they could be thinking a bit about a potential kill on Mazarin, who's considered by many as the star player of Ultra Virez. If he has a poor game, generally their team does, but he is going to be recalling. Meanwhile, in the top lane, though, we still have Zazas being chased down by MBS and Alanir, but still, Jankos is here to cover him, and they will be backing away once again. No casualties for now 
either as MBS will, will be pushing out this top lane picking up himself a little bit of farm as he might be backing away right after that and that might just deny Zazas quite a lot of farm Meanwhile, in that bottom lane, we still have Miramax and Coralius pushing quite hard as Salivar and Vander are being forced to farm under their turret. They are, but you can see that the CS is fairly even right now. Salivar is only a couple behind Miramax, so I'm going to keep calling Miramax. It very well could be the smurf of Deadly Brother, but still, we've not been any confirmed. Uh, information that left flash comes in though from Coralis, he's going to terrify away Celebra, who's forced to back it away. Igno has been popped on both AD carries, there's the second barrier now, and Miramax could be falling. If Vanda has enough burst damage, going to be jumping back in, gets the last auto attack, picks up the first blood. Wow, a support for his blood, and you don't see that too often, especially Vander going in one versus two now. Of course, they were quite low on uh, the red side, uh, on the... Um, X gaming gear side, they were quite low, so he did not have too much trouble. And of course, the Sona does do quite a lot of damage in those early stages. Right now, Alanir is forced to come over to that bottom lane and defend the turret. Um, as it is looking like Salivar and Vander will just be backing away right after this. And uh, uh, Alanir might have uh, been forced to waste a little bit of time here. Yeah, and whereas in the previous patch, 3.13, getting first blood on support is far from ideal, now in 3.14, it's not so bad, because supports do get more gold, they're going to be able to pick up some more AP items as well, and supports like Sona, that is just good, good news. So, overall, not terrible, they're going to be recalling right now, going to be interested to see what they buy up. There's going to be an early Bilgewater Cutlass on the side of the Bane, and for Sona, going to be getting that Ruby Crystal. And also building into Nomad's Medallion mid lane, no other power has been caught out here, here comes the Ignite as well, he could be falling, can Joke, Jankos comes to the rescue, no he's not, there's Ori Anna will be picking up Matt Gill, here's the Shockwave as well, and Jankos is in all kinds of trouble, managing to land that Undertow to find just a few more seconds, but he's got a charged up Alina right behind him, who takes down that second consecutive kill. No problem at all for these members of the X Gaming Gear lineup. Now, there are some things coming down on Dragon, but I don't think they'll actually be starting out off. On the other side, though, they might be looking for a blue buff here, as we do have NBS Law and Alanir rotating over to the uh, general area in which the blue buff spawns, of course, as they will be stealing off those uh, wolves and backing away. No, the uh, blue buff is not going to spawn, as it has already been picked up, I believe. Um, but we do have NBS Law for now heading back towards this top lane as uh, everything resets, if you will. Yep, yeah, have reached a bit of a lull again. Siv is going to be picking up the BF Sword though. So in terms of raw damage, it's going to be doing slightly more than Vayne. But remember, the Vayne has the Bulgewater Cutlass for sustain plus the Sona. And that's going to be the Aria of Perseverance heals coming in thick and fast. Plus the fact as well, Luke, is something that we mentioned before, is with that first blood, has got the No Man's Medallion, which is going to give even more mana regen and also even more health regen. So now, Vanda can afford to be even more aggressive and up in the face of this duo lane for Ultra Beeraz. Yeah, that is going uh, to be a little bit of a problem if they don't manage to deal with that correctly, of course. As uh, Vander right now doing a little bit of poke, not quite hitting Coralius. Coralius throwing out those crows. And we do have uh, both teams just starting to uh, send their junglers over to the general dragon area as they might uh, be looking for something to happen here. But for now, everything is. Uh, uh, nothing is looking to happen just yet. As we do have Alanir heading in towards his bottom lane. Selever and Vander. I don't think they actually see this coming. There is a pink horse. Here comes Alanir using the Assault and Battery on Salivar. Shadow comes out. It doesn't quite hit. Alanir trying to chase down Salivar, but he has flashed. So there's no kills coming out here for that team. Yep, so Crescendo just landed onto Fiddlesticks and nobody else, but that did buy them enough time to get them back to the safety and sanctuary of their own tower. That being said, even though Overpower died to Mazarin, does have about a 20 CS advantage, plus the fact this tower is very, very low on hit points. So that could be the first objective going into the hands of KMT here, and that's just going to be one more auto attack with 62 hit points remaining on this mid tower. Yeah, it is still standing though, so Mazarin will probably desperately trying will probably be trying to desperately defend that one as meanwhile on the bottom lane we did have of course Miramax and Coralius trying to def uh, to attack their enemies turns but for now they really did not succeed that good as uh, Zazas just uh, uses that sweeping lens to clear out his uh, counterpart lanes 
Yeah, he's kind of close for words, brother. And meanwhile, the bottom lane, you have uh, quite a lot of action coming down. Jankus with the gank on Corrales doesn't quite manage to finish him off, and both teams back away safely. Yeah, that was a crow storm from Fiddlesticks to start it off, but what they didn't realize is that Jankos, the jungler, was close in proximity and was forced to instantly pop off his ghost to get close and up in the grill of Coralius and Miramax. So it looked like a really good engage quickly turned sour and they had to back on the way. So again, just a case of the jungler being in the right place at the right time. Speaking of junglers, Alina is now trying to steal away these raids, but here comes Jankos from the side. He needs to be careful because he's kind of bare in terms of health. Alina instantly turns back around to face him with a Alongside Mazarin, so he's really gonna kick off. Still, rates were picked up by Luna. Celever is now trying to defend that bottom turret against two people as we do have Alanir heading towards the general area. The uh, turret is taking quite a lot of damage. Alanir is getting quite close now and he might just be able to make something happen here as he does back away in the end. And we did have Vander and both uh, both Vander and Jankos showing themselves here. As, oh, Janko did not show himself rather, but uh, Vander did. And we do have the members of Ultra Vias backing away in that bottom lane. And uh, still nothing really happening for now. Yeah, just a case of farm, 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 and see hearts content. Overpower uh -oh. does not have blue buff here, and actually, looks like they're going to be starting off from the dragon in nature. No one's actually too close from the side of Ultra Virez. We've got Vi picking up the wolves and Phil sticks in the bot lane. So this is going to be a free Drake going into the hands of KMT. And they could find themselves a kill as well. Flash in from Thunder. And the crescendo as well. Flashing away as Coralius. But he should be six foot under here. As that final attack is just a few moments away. In fact, he will be able to escape by the narrowest of margins. Still, though, they get the dragon. Yeah, meanwhile, in the middle lane, actually, we did have both the uh, Shockwave being popped and Overpower was forced to flash out of it. So he does manage to survive in the end, but he was forced to flash and he is forced to back away now. So Mazarin might take the opportunity to back away himself and I thought he might start to uh, do a little bit of pushing in the middle lane, but he doesn't. And in the top lane, we also had NBS Law almost getting the kill on Zazz's, but in the end, Zazz's Turns it around on NBS and NBS doesn't, uh, but NBS doesn't quite die yet. Yep, uh, 2,000 gold on Vayne as she recalls. We'll be picking up the instant blade of the rune, which is going to give such a big power spike and sustain in the lane right now. Up against Sivir, who looks to be building towards that blood thirster. Athens and Holy Grail has been picked up as well from Mazarin, which can give him nice amounts of wave clear, but it's not quite enough burst damage to instigib Ziggs, who himself also picked that and Holy Grail, but uh, meanwhile though, Nature, again, we've kind of got back to this stage of the game where the objective is down and both teams are just going to be farming it out. Not a great deal happening. Yeah, Overpow uh, has seen Alanir coming in here, and so Jankers and both Overpow know he is here. They n I think they might just uh, try and capitalize on that somehow, but it is looking like Jankos is just going toward their enemy's jungle. Oh, and he might just be looking for a gank here as he is waiting around that river ramp area. Here comes Alanir Jankos waiting in the wing, a wing to make something happen, but they back away in the end as uh, no one really wants to fight this. No, it's a case of needing to be in the right place at the right time, and it's just a, a matter of millimeters right now in this matchup with KMT getting the farm, which is going to benefit them, I have to feel, going forward in this game because Vayne scales like a boss, so does Ziggs, and Olaf is going to constantly be a huge presence going throughout this game because he can pop his Ragnarok, pop his, pop his Ghost, and suddenly be on the front doorstep of Miramax. And these team fights, Kralius and Mazarin, are lurking around the mid bush right now, and if Ziggs is unfortunate enough to walk down here, he will be dead. In fact, uh -oh. here comes a crow storm flashing in, terrifies well on top of Overpower. He should be falling any second now. There we go. And the kill will fall onto Mazarin. Yeah, Mazarin picks that one up. He is going to be quite content with that. As he is sitting on his second kill. Uh, the second kill that one is as a meme on the top lane. We do have MBS and Alien in here going in on towards others using the flesh. Soul and battery came out. He does survive in the end. As, and that was quite a perfectly placed one. Yeah, definitely worth right there from the top lane of Ultra Virez because Assault and Battery only has 117 second cooldown, whereas Flash has a 300 second cooldown. So they will take that one for sure. It's going to leave Zazis in a very sticky situation, to say the least, at top if they go ahead for the return gank again. But meanwhile, at bot lane, KMT are pushing the pace right now. Their tower is still alive, even though they've been on the back foot for the last 10 or so minutes. So 
big props to KMT, but now that Vayne has that Blade of the Rune King nature, they have to be super careful because if Crescendo goes down, Celever could be picking up these kills. Yeah, so Celever being uh, silenced out there, being forced uh, to back away just a little bit. Now they are pushing in this bottom lane. As we do have Alanir uh, donating that blue buff over to Mazarin. He might be heading towards that bottom lane, but it might just be too late. Crescendo comes down. The rally is in all kinds of trouble. He uses this, uh, the Terrify, but he goes down in the process. Here comes Alanir on towards Jankos. Jankos is not to be disabled at this point. Miramax trying to finish him off as he does go down in the end. That is a one for one. One for one, but it's a jungler for a support. And now they can turn this one back around. Although Silver and Vanda have read the script, they have no interest, and meanwhile, because Mazarin came to bot lane their nature, it allowed Overpower to push this mid tower. So, very good reaction replay that from the side of KMT. Yeah, so, Mazarin now being forced to uh, farm under his second tier turret. As meanwhile, in that top lane, we do have Zazas picking up that top tier one turret, and that means that is two turrets for none in. Uh, the uh, general game flow for now, but it is looking like they will be picking up a turret on the side of Ultra Virus. Yep, which has been low for a long, long time. So finally able to stamp their authority down there. Dragon is up in about 1 minute 15. So let's see which team makes a move for that once it respawns. Mazarin has a double buff, so he's looking pretty big right now at 3 and 0. Must have a big chunk of change in his back pocket. Yes, indeed. Over a 1,000 alongside Sive, who's on 1.8k. So they definitely need to go back, Nature, and pick up some items before that Dragon respawns. They're missing out on a lot of potential damage, a lot of potential sustain. Yeah, NBS Law now just trying to uh, put as much damage as he can uh, on towards that top turret and he might just be finishing off some jungle camps and recalling afterwards because uh, this might just uh, need all the manpower they can get near that dragon area as uh, he doesn't go for those golems and he might just back away right after that as we do have Coralius heading towards that Baron Pit, a uh, Dragon Pit rather, that would be from the Baron Pit at 17 minutes into <laughs> the game. And he might just start to uh, try and clear out as much wards as he can, but H2K or KMT rather are in there already. They are. Dragon up in 15 seconds. Van has been absolutely decimated and will be falling for Mazarin's fourth kill. Nice actual charge on Corrales. Pushes him out of position. Pushes him out enough actually that he has to flash away. Here's a mega inferno bomb. Corrales survives on 15 hit points and Miramax survives on just about the same. So that should be the free dragon. Now Alun is in all kinds of trouble. Condemned against the wall. Zeke picks that one up and here comes the free dragon afterwards. Yeah, Janko is now trying to get that kill on Mazarin, but he is taking so much damage. NDS Law goes in one versus four doesn't quite manage to pick up the kill on Jankos as Jankos gets away with a hundred HP and Mazarin gets away as well um, but I would not say that was actually worth it for NBS who uh, dove in one versus four. Yeah trying to delay the inevitable dragon but in doing so actually got himself killed and the dragon went down anyway so it was all about a case of that that dragon control of uh, KMT being in the right place getting the wards down and flushing themselves out a couple of free kills even though Mazarin's on 4 and 0 and pretty huge right now and they got the insta gib on Vanda they popped so much nature to get the support player down so they had no follow-up damage when the cavalry came roaring in and that's when KMT started to rinse and repeat and just clean up all over the place mm -hmm, so Oh, so right now we do have um, Ultra Vias trying to uh, regain a little bit of that vision control near the dragon area as we do have that tier 1 turret falling in the bottom lane in the favor of KMT. They will gladly be taking that one home as uh, uh, Celever, sorry, uh, will uh, be taking home the most part of that gold. And meanwhile we do have Overpower actually looking to steal this red buff of Ultra Vias's. Yep, they are looking to steal this one away, which is going to just get the ball rolling a bit more on KMT's favor, who've now suddenly accumulated a 4.5k gold lead over their counterparts. And up until the last few moments when that dragon and the two or three kills went down, this is very even. So it goes to show again that KMT, they're getting the gold in the right place. He's got an early void staff in the lease. That is going to be scary to play against. It's a lot of burst damage, actually. And look at MBS Law, he has finished himself up a Spirit Visage and a Giant's Belt. 
he has around 200, uh, 2,500 health, so he is getting a little bit too tanky for uh, KMT's liking, if you will, at this point. And I could imagine they're starting uh, to have some trouble finishing him off. They will start to have some trouble finishing him off in team fights if those will occur. But for now, they are not occurring at all. But Jankos might find NBS Law here. NBS Law is just a little bit too swift for him as he backs away safely. Yeah, it's very difficult to kill this dragon right now. He's got Dragon's Descent, which is effectively a mini flash. And then the flash is available as well. Plus the fact that MBS LOL has a Spirit Visage and a Giant's Belt. He's so, so tanky. Crownies has been caught on position here from Jankos. He's going to be popping that now. Dragon Rock as well. They are going to be picking up that free kill with the raw damage output from Elise. So a bit of a glass cannon build right now from Zazus. But if he catches just the Cocoon, that should transition very comfortably into free kills on the likes of Crownies. He's still very squishy. Yeah, so right now, uh, here comes a slow down battery on for Celebr. Celebr taking so much damage. Crescendo comes out here. Is this really? Is it Reverie being used? Alanir still trying to chase them down. Flash being used by Vander. And they back away in the end. No kills picked up here. Jankos might be looking for a kill from the side. But in the end, they back away. Alasman of Ascension plus the movement speed as well from the celerity of Van that will keep them alive and a beautiful crescendo pixel perfect going through three or four players again Zazis is just going to stay at top lane and pick up another free tower and this is what they did at Dreamhack they start to accumulate a few thousand gold lead here and there and then they manage to put it into objective control Zazis will stay at top now he's picked up the second tier tower however he may think about pushing in mid but what I'd expect to see him do is staying at top lane and drawing out a couple players to try and pick him up from Ultra Beerez while the rest of KMT burdens down the bot lane and tries to pick up that inhibitor and it's very difficult to deal with. So for now we do still have everyone uh, just starting to face off in uh, this little bit of a Mexican standoff as uh, there is no real objectives for the taking at this point and uh, of course and they could go and try Russia Baron but that would be way way too risky at this point in the game as Alanir is right now tasked to defend this middle tier 2 turret and he uh, might just be rotating over to that bottom lane speaking about the bottom lane celebrating all kinds of trouble he gets that ignites on the macro storm being used uses the barrier and then condemns mere max away is trying to run away desperately right now trying to live steal in the meantime the boomerang doesn't quite hit but mirror max will be picking that one up in the end Real balls you play from Selenvar. I don't think they anticipated both players being down there and instantly got terrified. Lost three quarters, 80% of his health. And from there on in, it was a fairly comfortable kill. So with that happening, it's going to be Miramax with his double buff now pushing down the bot lane. Needs to be careful because Jankos is here. Mega Infernal Bomb's going to be coming down from Ziggs just to clear out this wave and not allow this second tier tower at bot to take any damage. So Miramax, going to pick up the double golems. Needless death, I have to say, from Selenvar, but there's still a pretty long way ahead regardless. Yeah, Miramax trying to close out that gold discrepancy just a little bit as he got, gets spotted out by a ward. We'll be clearing that one out though. And um, he uh, has stolen some of those golems, but that really is just uh, not really anything to uh, care about on the side of KMT as they are so, so far ahead as you said. And um, Miramax will just be backing away, no real problem there as Jankos might have been looking to finish him off but he uh, doesn't do so in the end. Because if you look at the scores, it doesn't look that one-sided. But what you have to keep in account is 4-1 to one on towers and 2 dragons to 0 in KMT's favour. So they're effectively 6-1 to one objectives ahead. And that's going to transition into a lot of extra gold that they're picking up. They've got big items. Here comes Luna at top lane though. Zazis in quite a bad predicament. He does, however, have... The Repel available, plus the Flash if he so chooses. There's Repel, there's the Flash. Terrify, however, will be landing just on the edge. And now Zadis has three Ivy players chasing him down. They will finalize that kill. But now, is it going to be a case the KMT push back? Not looking likely. Ziggs and Olaf actually going to top lane instead. Yeah, we do have Mazarin and Miramax tasked to defend this bottom inner turret. And they will be successful in doing so as they force Silver and Vander away. They will be clearing out some of those awards and uh, just trying to get as much uh, vision control as they can. They have rotated over to that dragon area and uh, they will be picking that one up without any type of contestion. contest. Yeah, so again, 
you know, you got to say, okay, you killed Dancers, so what? You still lost an objective, and KMT are going to be more than happy with that trade. Kill for objective, they'll take it every day of the week. So, KMT still edging themselves ahead. And that's how strong Zazis is right now, Nature. Three, two or three players have to chase him down, or he'll be able to escape. And in doing so, it's allowing KMT to dictate the pace and instigate fights wherever they so choose. Yeah, right now, um... Do you have the Mega Inferno Bomb coming out on that middle lane, making sure that lane is pushed out, so they might just be looking for something to happen here as Jankos checks these bushes for something to happen. Clears out the ward with the sweeping lens, or it doesn't quite do so in the end, as he was spotted out by Coralius, who has forced him away. And they uh, will be trying to push out this middle lane on the side of... Um, Ultra Virus, but there is two members defending it. Oh, me on the top lane, we do have Zazas being caught once again. MBS Lord goes in with the Dragon's Ascent Repel being used, but it's not quite enough as Zazas goes down. They may be able to take a tower off this, but it looks like they're more pre preoccupied with dealing with this four-man push of bot lane. So again, they get the kill on Zazas, but they're not able to pick up any objectives. And kills do not win matches, objectives do. That Nexus falling is what indicates the end here. And all four players will be pushing this one down very quickly. They've got Selva, who has a lot of attack speed. Blade of the Rune King and the Phantom Dancer Puss, plus the Berserker's Greaves as well. So it's difficult to deal with them right now. And again, Zazas is going to be respawning in seven seconds. They may get this top tier tower, but still, KMT are way, way ahead. Yeah, and they will be stealing off these buffs of the enemies of theirs. As Alanir was still pushing in that top lane, he has finished off the turret in the meantime. So they will be taking home a little bit of that gold meme on the bottom lane. We do have Crescendo coming out. MBS Law is so, so tanky. He's trying to deal with three members of HCK, though. Uh, of KMT though, so that is quite a dangerous situation as Coralius was almost, has almost gone down, but he hasn't gone down in the end, and Overpower has bitten the dust. That's what we're talking about with those shockwaves, they really can turn the tides, it can't caught on what, two or three players there, and crush them inside Mazarin, even though his team are now behind by, what's that, 4.4k, he's still 5 and 0 nature, so he's still pretty huge, got Rabbit on Death Cap, Athena's in Holy Grail, and 1.7k gold to spend, so he is going to be their make or break here, their sink or swim member. If Mazarin can continue to land those shockwaves in the team fights, they can still win this game, but if Mazarin dies, they're in a lot of trouble. Yeah, and NBS Law has now started to uh, start split pushing, if you will, as he was uh, clearing out the, some of those minions in the bottom lane. And uh, we do have Selever uh, being sent over there to uh, try and deal with that, but he has uh, NBS that is has backed away already, so he will be picking himself up some items and returning to lane. And we do have all uh, or almost all of the members heading towards that middle lane, as uh, we do still have NBS Law heading towards that top lane. And this might spell trouble for Zazas if he gets too deep in towards that top lane as all of the members of Ultra Virus are heading there right now. That was an interesting thing Salova just did at bot lane. He popped his ultimate to check a bush. So uh, that's going to be 70 second cooldown, which is no big deal, but still managing to push this bot lane. So at this point, Ultra Virus, they have to make a judgment call. Do we go down to deal with Selva? Do we potentially go for the fast Baron push? And they're kind of caught in neither position. The Sivir is coming down, but Selva can simply dual Sivir right now. They do have Karen Alias as well coming out and Mazarin. So they're still losing a lot of tower hit points, though. And this could be Selva just backing on away. So this is the problem that you face, Nature, when you've got a pretty beefy uh, vein to deal with. You can't really commit to dueling her, otherwise you'll die. And if you send two or three players bot lane, that's where Baron starts to be definitely on the table and ripe for the taking. Yeah, so for now we do have both AD carries of both teams facing off in that bottom lane. And the other members of both teams are just uh, rotating around the... Uh, Baron, a bit of a Baron dance as we like to call it, and that might uh, well start off in a little bit of a team fight if someone gets caught, or of course the uh, losing team of that uh, team fight, or if someone gets caught, the losing team there will be forced to back away and gift over that Baron to the other team, which is uh, not ideal in any case. No, certainly not. You don't want to give up Baron, and at 30, well, coming up 30 minutes on the timer right now, it is very available for both teams 
you know, looking at KMT, you've got a Vayne, you've got an Olaf, you've also got Ziggs, he's very quick at clearing through with Elise, so they can take this very quickly, but on the flip side, Ultra Virez also have a pretty fast Baron clear on top of that, so it's going to come down to who gets who out of position, maybe the Baron will only happen though nature after a couple picks, it could be a case, you know, you get Coralius off the table, he's very squishy, if you can insta-kill him, or Vanda, that could be the mark to go for the Baron. Yeah, Vander is uh, so so squishy. He has started him. He started building the um, uh, locket of the Iron Solari, so he might just get a little bit more tanky than uh, he is at this point. But uh, at this point, as you said, he is a little bit too squishy to uh, survive uh, a little bit of a gank. As we do have all of the members of. Ultra Veras, Veras heading towards that barren area. We do still have Selover in the bottom lane. I'm not too sure whether they saw him, but um, KMT have started off this dragon. This might be the call for Ultra Veras to start off this barren. It could be. I'm not too sure if they know where KMT is, though. However, they're starting off this barren. And as I said, they've got a very quick barren clear. Here comes the Mega Inferno Bomb. More of a scouting tool than anything else. And I think now KMT realize they're not in a position to take down the Baron. Will they go for the engage afterwards? Here comes Rally. And the front line's Chris General comes through. Runs on absolutely nobody. And that could spell doom as MBS Wall goes in. Will be falling down as a beautiful repel will keep Elise alive for a few more moments. But now Selva is feeling the blunt force trauma of KMT as they get absolutely destroyed by Ultra Virez. That is a three for one trade. Plus the Baron on the side of Ultra Virez. And this could have just turned the tide once again in this game yeah this is not good at all for kmt and they will be looking to push that middle lane on the side of ultra Virus, as they do have of course got that uh, extreme sieging tool if you will with the uh, extremely powerful regeneration of both mana and health on the baron buff so they might just uh, start to siege continuously at this point. But uh, for now, it is looking like they'll back away, clear out their own jungle, and maybe buy some nice items. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of gold in their back pockets. Four players over a thousand gold right now so it's going to give them nice amounts of spikes coming back into this and again it just goes to show what a seesaw of a game league of legends is kmt looked in the driver's seat for the last 15 or so minutes and suddenly that one play that one opportunistic baron call from ultra virez has them right back into this match up it's just a question now though nature can ultra virez do anything with this baron buff they need to pick up a couple of objectives because they're still behind yeah, they certainly are. It is uh, not as much as it was earlier this game, though, as they are 3,000 gold behind at this point, and they were, um, I'd say, 6,000 gold behind at some point in the game. So they have definitely managed to crawl back just a little, but as you said, they still need to uh, make something happen here if they really want to make that Baron call uh, worth it, if you will, because, of course, they uh, did trade... Uh, a little bit for it as we do have Alan here right now checking the uh, general blue buff area for uh, maybe some enemies as we do have Jankos and Overpow in the near vicinity but for now it isn't looking like anyone's going to be in real trouble. And I, I'm hoping that Ultra Virez do something more of the Baron because they're, they're playing very passive top lane. Luna has been caught here from Janko. Undertow comes out. Can that cocoon land? No, it won't because the flash comes out from a Luna. And that should seal the deal in terms of that uh, onslaught from KMT. But again, going back to the point I was going to make, I really hope that Ultra Virez push down together and start to take some objectives because they can't afford to play passive. As I said before, they're in a ticking time bomb. You've got the likes of Vayne, Ziggs on the opposite team. You need to make amends. You need to make use of your advantages that you've been hand given right now from KMT. It looks like they're doing just that down the mid. Yeah, right now, uh, Mega Inferno Bomb comes out. Keralius gets uh, half of his HP just uh, flushed down the toilet, if you will, and, and they will be uh, successfully defending that middle lane. And they might just uh, start... Oh, this is nasty. <laughs> this is really nasty. They're actually uh, gripping up behind this little wall. And they might just start to look for a little bit of a pick here. And they do decide against it in the end. They uh, scatter and they will be moving towards Selever. Uh, Selever has spotted out Keralius as he just stepped onto a ward. And he will be backing away safely, or will he? Because Coralius might just 
and make a little bit of a pincer movement to uh, trap him there, but Celebrate does get out in the end. Even though that was a really terrifying prospect of that gank, KMT playing really smart. They realize that they are second best in terms of uh, damage output and sustain with the Baron buff on the side of Ultra Baron, so they're just playing passive. They're waiting for the Baron to run out. They don't want to be going in and fighting. Baron's almost ran out as well. So, in this case, KMT are playing very well. They have a lot of wave clear as well, which is something we haven't mentioned. With the minefields, the bouncing bombs, the undertows, and everything else, the volatile spidling, for example, from Elise, they can pretty much clear a creep wave instantaneously in nature. So, again, it's very difficult to actually push objectives down when you're against the lineup of KMT. Yeah, and right now, we do have Ultra Virez, who's uh, Baron Volt has timed out, as you said. So they will not have that regen and uh, uh, their health and mana regen for now, as they do manage to seal the blue buff of KMTs and they will be backing away. As we do have Dragon coming up in around one minute. Now, of course, uh, Dragon Gold has been incre increased in the latest patch for the uh, later stages of the game. So they might just be rotating over to that general area. Yeah, it's much more relevant throughout the matchup now. Is Dragon after the four, the 3.14 patch change, I should say. But also, I'd like to bring the attention to Zig's farm. Holy crap, 431 farm after 36 minutes. Wow, that's that's not something I've seen for quite a long time. He's over farming Mazarin by 100 CS. Wow, yeah, that is, um, yeah, as you said, uh, you don't see that every day as we do have the Baron respawning in one minute and around 40 seconds so that will probably be uh, a big point in the uh, upcoming team fight as we did have already Janko's clearing out some wards now and it's MBS lol's turn to start doing the same as he uh, has popped in those pink wards but Zazz and Vander are heading towards him. I'm not too sure both of them can actually deal with MBS Lol though at this point, as of course he is really, really tanky. As we do have Alanir and the rest of the uh, Ultra Virus's crew starting off the dragon. What I would say as well, though, just uh, while we have a bit of a, a slower paced part of this game, is that KMT at DreamHack, they were always in their comfort zone, in their element when they were ahead in games. They didn't fare as well against SK Gaming, for example, when they went behind. So this is a difficult situation. Jankos has been caught out of position here, instantly popping off that Ragnarok and Ghost as well. Question is, do they want to chase this one in? Mega Inferno Bomb, isolating Aluna from the rest of his team. But it's not enough to pick up any kills, and not really enough to deter them for very long. With Baron up in 35 seconds, this is going to be a bit of a scary moment for KMT. Yeah, they are heading towards that Baron area. Mazarin is not there though, as he is um, well, starting off this blue buff. They certainly do not want to give that one away. Now he is trying to rejoin his team as fast as possible. So is Alanir, as he was recalling. He has picked himself up a Banshee's Veil now at this point. So uh, he is going to be a little bit more difficult to kill. As, of course, that will block out any skills within uh, every 55 seconds. I I'm sorry, I can't get over this X farm. That is absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. I can't remember the last time, maybe Froggen, when we used to cast Froggen way back in the day at KSTV here. Zazas has been caught though, forced to flash through that wall to keep himself alive. But with that flash and the damage being put down, plus the fact that Celebus still in mid, again it looks as though we have Ultra V-Rays taking this opportunistic Baron call. The question is, can there be a beautiful steal on the cards? Here comes Ghost Storm from Coralius to zone out the onslaught of the rest of KMT, but it's not going to be enough. Baron's been picked up. Here comes the Talisman of Ascension, but just to get them away and out of dodge. So again, Ultra Virez making the big calls when it counts. Yeah, they do manage to pick up once again that Baron buff. They will be starting to pick up some items for themselves and start to siege probably right after that, as uh, we do have right now uh, Shivana or MBS finishing off the uh, Sunfire Cape. So if if she or he rather starts to split push that is going to be uh, relatively fast but I would imagine him uh, sticking with the team just to make something happen and maybe try and destroy a turret. I apologize in chat there someone asked is it a best of three I said no it's a best of 54 
but no, I, I missed type fat finger syndrome there. It is a best of five, ladies and gents, and if you have just joined us, this is game number one. So plenty more League of Legends actions to come here. Miramax is going to find himself a Jankos in the jungle, and the Celebre is also not looking too good for Miramax. He should be falling right now. There you go. The raw damage from Celebre raining out, and they will pick up that free kill. And with Miramax being dead for pretty much 60 seconds on the nose, interesting to see if KMT could make some plays off this. I really doubt it, to be honest, as, um, yeah, there you, there you have it. They are being forced in towards this defensive position. Everyone is heading towards them of uh, the KMT team as they do realize Miramax, who is such a huge, huge damage source of the uh, Ultra Virus' team, um, is not there at this point, of course. So there you have it. Salover finishing off a turret as he is trying to rejoin his team. And BS Law might be looking for a little bit of a pick along the side of the um, middle inner turret. But for now, it really isn't looking like anything can be done by this uh, Ultra Virus team. I can't stress enough how important that was from KMT to get that pick because not only did they get a tower, not only are they now in the driver's seat and they're wasting the Baron buff as well from Ultra Virez, so they're not taking punishment themselves. But with Miramax being dead for 60 seconds, it was very difficult, honestly, for Ultra Virez to do anything other than just sit on their towers, as you said. So, big, big play right there. Miramax is probably being uh, talked to by his team saying, don't do that again. Now, Jankos has been caught, though, from NVS. Well, here comes the Ragnarok. Randuin's Omen's been used as well. Aluni's going to pop his Randuin's Omen, but the Ragnarok is just going to stop any slowing, any uh, disabling components against Jankos, and he's going to back away just fine. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the, um, uh, so sorry, the Olaf is back. That is so good to see, and of course, he was nerfed quite early in uh, the last season, and uh, that made him disappear completely from the scene. And now he is back, so that is quite nice to see. Meanwhile, we do have, of course, that Ultra Virus team heading towards that bottom lane. This is going to be a turret falling very, very fast. Now we do have KMT trying to react to that desperately. NBS being caught, but he jumps out with the Dragon's Descent. Elenir trying to get out as well. Here comes the Mega Inferno bomb. Mazarin of uh, Mazarin does get hit as the only one on his team. But in the meantime, we do have Miramax trying to backdoor the base of KMT here. And now it might just be the turn for Ultra Virus to interrupt those recalls. But it isn't looking like uh, they are doing so as they are backing away. Yeah, gold pretty much identical right now. Sat so so close. It's a case of both teams just trying to outmaneuver the opposition. Blue's going to be picked up by Miramax, who will be backing on away. Really smart play there, actually. Overall, from Ultra Virez, realizing they were strong enough. They had the Talisman of Ascension, which is effectively Shirelli's reverie from the previous patch. So they could get themselves out of any potential engages from KMT and allow their AD carry to burst down that top tower and do a fair amount of damage as well to that inhib tower. So again, nature right now. This game is so, so close. One small mistake could be the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, and uh, both teams do not want to make that mistake, of course, because uh, there is a lot on the line for this one. As the winner of this best of five will, of course, be advancing to the next round. And uh, for now, um, that can be any one of these teams because they are. this is a really, really close matchup so far. So um, both teams just really facing off in a little bit of a Mexican standoff once again. And I'm not too sure what is going to happen at this point, as we do have, of course, Ultra Virus just rushing that bottom inner turret. So all outer towers from both teams are now down. It's all down to the base. Uh, I've got to say again, this Zix farm is just ridiculous. 513 at 43 minutes, my goodness. And you can see that even though his score isn't that good at 1-3-3, three, three, it doesn't matter. The CS is more than enough. But now you can see the Ultra Virez with their comp, being able to pick somebody off and systematically just destroy them. It's keeping KMT on the back foot. They have the ward coverage as well. Vanda's coming in, but with a Banshee's Veil on Coralius, this is a really smart pickup as well, Nature, I've got to say, because Vanda was able to crescendo and they could insta-give Coralius. With this Banshee's Veil, that's no longer possible. Yeah, so Coralius picking himself up uh, some defense against um, probable uh, gank camping there, as uh, he will be backing away while his team has picked up the dragon. As we do have Baron once again spawning in 1 minute and 30 seconds, 1 minute and 20 seconds rather. So we do have, of course, that uh, Ultra Virus team 
most of them backing away for now and buying up and they might just head towards the barren area right after. So while we have this minute or so of flotation between the two teams, let's have a quick look at some of the items we've built up. We have uh, two Randuin's Omens, in fact, excuse me, we've got three Randuin's Omens, two on the side of Ultra Viras, one on KMT, which can be coming in from Olaf, and very, very tanky right now. But the AD carries pretty much both identical builds, almost going through to the uh, the six item builds right now and on top of that the AP carries are huge as well so 44 nearly 45 minutes through this game everyone an even playing field it's going to come down to the execution nature it's going to come down to who can make that big big call at the right time Coralius he's dicing with death right now he doesn't want to come out second best yeah this is the very first time uh, KMT is actually in a position to take or to contest this Baron instantly because uh, the earlier times, they, they had someone in the bottom lane, they had someone in the mid lane, and uh, they really were not able to do something about that Baron being taken, as we do have Jankos getting caught here. He is, he's going to go one-on-one -on -one with a Luna. Here comes a cross from Kalaf. Rally is, Crescendo was used, lands on two players as well, flashing in, terrifying away Salva, who's going to be cleansing out of that instantly. Nobody's fallen just yet, but Jankos will be the first recipient of death right now. Miramax has caught up at that first damage, going straight through onto his Guardian's Angel. Satchel charge, Mega Infernal Bomb so close to picking up Sivir after that resurrection, but now Salva's had his j off right now. It's a one-for-one -one trade after all hell is broken loose. That's going to be his on his hourglass from Zaza's keeping him alive. Now Bane's fallen down. Zaza's chasing after Mazarin. He's going to die to the double kill. And suddenly, out of nowhere, it's gone into a 4 for 2 trade in Ultra Vera's favor. Wow, are you kidding me? Just three members remaining on the uh, Ultra Vera's team. I'm not too sure whether they can actually do Baron at this point, as uh, they are very, very low. They are starting it off though, as of course Rallius has got that drain, so he will be just draining that one down. The uh, Banshee still blocking some of the damage, and it is looking like they will be able to uh, finish the Baron off. Over the only remaining member on that KMT team, and I don't think like, he can do anything about this. No, he can't. Uh, I think the determining factor in that fight was when the J was popped from Miramax. He was dead, resurrecting. And the Mega Inferno Bomb and Satchel Charge from Overpower came down. The Mega Inferno Bomb was literally a millisecond too early. It did no damage to Sivir, managed to escape, and then clean up the likes of Selva. Just the reason I'm saying this, if Miramax died after the GA was popped, Selva would have been given free reigns to clean everybody up afterwards. I honestly feel that was the turning point of the fight. That being said though, Nature, it's still not over here. Both teams have a shot. This Baron buff, however, is going to be quite difficult to deal with. It certainly is going to be quite hard for that KMT lineup to uh, maybe uh, even, yeah, as you said, deal with that. As they are being forced into this defensive position. They are starting off to uh, put up a little bit of a defensive perimeter when it comes to vision here. As they really want to see that Ultra Virus team coming when it is... Uh, heading towards them of course as uh, overpower uses the sexual charge to jump out that always looks funny when he does that and right now this might be it as we do have ultra virus starting to barge down that middle lane yeah they look hungry to finish this game they have the baron on three players they are stronger overall than has been caught out of position right now from a luna but they didn't want to jump on top of that knowing that the crescendo was available and it could have turned the tide so again very flirtatious play from both teams. They don't want to fully commit to this because even though Ultra Viras are ahead on gold, it's not by much. Even though they have Baron buff, right now, 15 minutes through the game or thereabouts, it's not as important as it was previously in the matchup. If they got it around 30, it would be much, much more devastating. So again, they have to be careful, Nature. They can't get arrogant, they can't get cocky, because if they get clean ace, they will lose this game. Yeah, this is... Uh... Once again, quite a dangerous situation for either team as MBS Law almost got caught right there as Jankos uh, was running just after Coralius and then turned his attention to MBS Law. Both did manage to survive though. Coralius got shielded from a little bit of a combo of overpower and still no casualties for now as we do have Alanir doing split pushing or starting to split push in that bottom lane as his team is looking to rejoin him for uh, maybe what is looking to be a uh, inhibitor tower push 
it looks likely. They're thinking about this split push, so keeping Violet bot to take away some of the threat of KMT in the mid, but now it seems they've changed their mind, they're going to be grouping up on bot lane. But what I'd like to see right now is maybe Shivana go top lane and split push to the top tower while they simultaneously take the bot as well. Vander actually took just one single bouncing uh, boomerang, if you will, and he lost almost half of his HP. So that just shows how quickly he is going to be going down when he gets caught. And right now, still both teams maybe looking for a little bit of a pick here as Vander is um, desperately trying to deny ward coverage from uh, uh, Ultra Virus's team as they have started to uh, maybe group up here and look for a pick once again, but it really is not looking like KMT are actually falling for it. You know, I can't help but feel that, you know, right now KMT, they've got the Baron buff. If they just sent one of their plays to the top lane to clear out this wave, they don't necessarily even have to go for the tower. But if they just rinse and repeat at top, clear out the wave, they could be pushing the bottom uh, lane at the same time. And even if it doesn't pick up a tower, it's going to do a bit of damage. And over a while, that will transition into another tower falling. Right now, all they're doing is they're grouping in mid and they're playing into KMT's hands. They're like, okay, this is cool. We can clear the creep waves almost instantly. You can't push down our towers. You're wasting this Baron buff from three players, and you're also allowing us to pick up our last couple of items. So, it's a case right now that Ultra Viras, they need to think outside the box. They need to do something a bit different. Yeah, right now we do have those crows coming out. Right now being used. Great crescendo. Two max crescendo, that is. And here comes the Mega Inferno. Well, Miramax forced to face off against Dankos. Locker of the Iron Solar being used. One man cat. Uh, one man. Uh, Shockwave being used there, MBS Lol forced to flash out as we do have the Vi going down first. Now we might have Salivar going down here as well as Mazarin fights to just Salivar looking for two kills. He manages to get one. That is a double kill for him or that is just one as uh, Zazas picks up one and Miramax is the only remaining member on the Ultra Virus team. And this is the problem, Nature, that I was trying to say just before the engage went off, that they're playing into KMT's hands. Once they have the Guardian's Angels up, once they see somebody out slightly out of position, they're going to pounce. And Ultra Virus did absolutely nothing with that siege. They finally pick up the tower off the minions, but in doing so, they've lost four players down for 40 seconds. And you can now see that both Jankos and Zazas are pushing this mid tower very, very hard. So Ultra Virus, they need to learn from this mistake. The game should not be over right now. But again, it's just tipping backwards and forwards and Ultra Virus were in a really good position. We are 51 minutes into this game. This is looking to be uh, quite the game so far. Miramax might be in trouble though. Zazas goes in. Banshee still being top pop but Miramax taking so much damage. Mega Inferno Bomb comes in but it is all too little, all too late for Overpower as uh, we did have Zazas picking, one, uh, picking that one up already. Yeah, they lacked that killer instinct here, Ultra Virus, and they could pay, pay dearly, especially as their AD carry is down for 60 seconds. That's one in hit down, soon to be two, I have to feel. Although the Calvary is coming in, so how can Ultra Virus come back from this? Here comes the assault and battery. Overpower's been absolutely decimated. There's the Zonis, Argos, though, flashing back into his skin. That's a beautiful crescendo coming in, though, from Vanna to push them both back. Will Aluna be going down? No, he will not. They not ignite not quite enough, but they have pushed them back. And that's the important thing here, because they didn't lose that second second inhibitor. But my goodness, that crescendo was awesome. That was one beautiful crescendo indeed. As right now Mazarin is heading in towards his jungle to check what is still there. And he will find that, of course, his blue buff is still there. So he will be picking that one up and uh, getting that uh, mana regen and uh, some of that uh, cooldown reduction, which has been reduced significantly, but he will still get it. As right now, still Ultravirus trying to uh, scout out as much as they can and uh, try and find as much wards as they can, as of course, or as you might have seen, Baron will be respawning in 20 seconds as we do have a pause coming in here. <laughs> Second phone. <laughs> So there is a phone call here for uh, a sign of Ultra Virez. And just a couple of things while we have this uh, this pause coming in, because obviously we have no idea how long Aluna is going to be talking to on the phone. It's important to mention, I feel here as well, nature that 
KMT, they're at DreamHack. They were playing on the 3.13 patch. They only got Mac a day or two days ago. Whereas Ultraviris actually cancelled going to DreamHack for, with the reason of we need to play in the Season 4 promotion qualifiers soon. So we want to play on the live patch. So therefore, you have to say that going into this game, Ultraviris should be favourites. They've had a lot of practice on this patch. They know what works. They know what's strong. They know in which order. Whereas KMT have just been coming off the back of playing a whole different patch. So again, I think we need to give huge props here to KMT for coming out the way they have and to be performing the way they have so far in this matchup. Yes, indeed, they have uh, been proving to be quite the opponent for uh, every team so far they have faced. As um, apparently, Ultraviers is still on the phone, so we are going to wait just a little bit longer. And um, well, obviously, we do have, and right now, um, oh. We might have just uh, the pause being cancelled here as with the game will be resuming. But as I was saying, we do have Ultra Virus in a little bit of a precarious, a precarious situation. I'm Dutch. That happens. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dutch. <laughs> that happens, precarious. yes, indeed. That is cool. um, all right, so they are in a little bit of a um, <clears throat> dangerous situation for there you now. Go. And um, I'd have to say, what, what should they, I'd have to ask rather, what should they do? to actually, um, well, contest this Baron without losing too much. It's it's difficult, but all 10 players, the good news is from both teams actually, that all 10 players are going to be here. So there is an out and out winner right off the bat. It's not like one of the AD carries right now is farming bot lane and it's a no brainer. So I'm going to have this Baron dance and honestly, this game could be decided right here, right now. Whoever picks up Baron, whoever gets that kill or two, can easily push down the towers because as we saw previously the respawn time is the death chamber it's about 65 to 70 seconds that's more than enough down time to push down the uh, the nexus towers if you are on kmt or the in here plus nexus towers if you're on ultra Virus. yeah that is uh, indeed going to be quite hard for them to for them to handle at this point because they are going to have to deal with those super minions in one lane and then the exposed inhibitor in the other lane as a uh, you said so for now they will just uh, be trying to uh, rotate over towards the middle lane clear out the waves rotate over to the dragon and rinse and repeat for now as they are starting to rush this middle lane this might be dangerous as we do have got a little bit of a pincer movement coming in here uh, we do have the undertow coming out and alanir might just be turning on towards jankos jankos is in trouble he will probably be able to get away or, or will he because miramax is going half he is doing so much damage to Shadow again, coming through, lands on two or three players. The Dragon's Descent from MBS, lol. He's keeping Jankos away from the rest of his team, but his overpower, really good positioning from him, able to pick apart Aluna, who's now going to be going in with his awesome battery. Here comes the Shockwave, blowing up both Jankos and overpower for the double kill. Question now, can KMT bounce this one back? They still have Salva and Vanda, their dynamic duo. Are they going to be enough to keep themselves alive? 60 second death time, it's five versus two situation on the cards. This is going to be the middle inhibitor falling nature. This could be the first game going to Ultra Virus. What a game so far, and they really, I do think they will be finishing this one off. Look at that, those turrets falling so, so fast. Vander dropping almost in a second, as we do have Selver going down very quickly. He will probably be being picked up here, as Mazarin uses his own as hourglass. No problem for them at this point, and they will be finishing off the Nexus. Very first game of this best of five series, going to Ultra Virus. Uh, the game of throws continues. And this time around, Ultra Virez are uh, lucky enough that the ball landed in their court. So that was an awesome game. 55, nearly 56 minutes in its entirety. And Ultra Virez coming out with the big W. That being said, though, Nature, as you mentioned, that's just the first out of potential five games that we have lined up. So after the commercial break, we're going to be jumping into game number two in the picks and bounds between these two squads and see if KMT can bounce on back. And uh, you're off. 